From a literal Lego assault rifle to a set that genuinely looked like a concentration camp, these are some of the most controversial and banned Lego sets in existence. Starting things off with the Breaking Bad Citizen Brick set. Remember the critically acclaimed TV series Breaking Bad? Well, who doesn't? I mean, everybody knows this TV show. Well, brace yourself because an independent company called Citizen Brick decided to encapsulate the essence of the show in Lego form. This audacious set dubbed Breaking Bad stirred up quite a commotion when it hit the online market with a price tag of $250. However, here's the twist. Lego distanced itself from the creation. Although every piece in this set was made from Lego bricks, the company had no hand in its conception or endorsement, and they made sure of that. And that's why you can consider this set to be banned. Lego Rifle. In the modern era today, where concerns about safety and security do run high, even the most harmless items can sometimes trigger disproportionate reactions. So consider the case of a six-year-old student in Massachusetts whose choice of a toy sparked an unexpected chain of events during his morning school bus ride. As innocent as it might seem, the young boy decided to share his quarter-sized Lego minifigure rifle with his fellow students. And the result? Well, panic. The sight of the toy rifle caused a flurry of distress among the other children, prompting the bus driver to take swift action by slamming on the brakes. And while legal consequences weren't in the cards for the boy, he did face detention and a mandatory written apology to both the driver and his fellow passengers. And think about it, it's all because of a Lego gun looking a little too realistic. The boy's mother believed that the school's response was an overreaction asserting that the Lego toy posed no actual threat, while on the other hand, the bus driver painted a different picture describing a bus full of shocked children and an unexpected disruption to the morning routine. So, the lesson learned? Don't make Lego guns too realistic. But let's move on to the Mr. White terrorist minifigure. Sometimes the interpretation of a seemingly harmless object can lead to unexpected and heated debates. Case in point, the creation of a custom Lego minifigure named Mr. White by a company called Brick Arms. This figure, dressed in a tan militant shirt and black pants, including a pistol, an assault rifle, and an RPG, and even several grenades. However, it is the white head wrap that drew significant attention and controversy. The Ramadan Foundation, a Muslim organization, took an issue with the minifigure's appearance, stating that it bore a disturbing resemblance to an Islamic terrorist. This interpretation then went on to also trigger accusations of glorifying terrorism. So, in contrast, the founder of Brick Arms, Will Chapman, defended the figure as a generic bandit character, devoid of specific attributes or affiliations. But I mean, if you saw this minifigure, what would you think? The Simpsons set. You've probably heard of The Simpsons, right? Now imagine bringing that chaotic charm into the world of Lego bricks. So for that reason, the people over at Lego teamed up with The Simpsons in 2014 to release sets inspired by the show. But there was a twist because The Simpsons isn't exactly a kids only kind of show with its fair share of grown up humor as well. This left parents wondering if these Lego sets were appropriate for the youngsters or not. A company spokesperson reassured everyone that these these sets were designed primarily for the fans of the show, and there's nothing wrong with them. But it did get really close to being banned. How about the construction worker cat call sticker? So a dad out there named Josh Stern stumbled upon a sticker featuring a construction worker minifigure with the cringeworthy cat call, hey babe, and not finding it funny at all, he took his complaint public. And guess what? It gained some serious attention. Lego didn't just respond once to the matter either, but also twice. But nonetheless, Lego acknowledged the issue, apologized for the sticker, and assured him that the steps would be taken to avoid such blunders in the future. So would you get mad over this sticker? It almost got banned because of this dad can't take in a joke. Jabba the Hutt's Mosque. Lego and Star Wars seem like a match made in geek heaven, right? Well, usually yes, but there was this one set that caused quite a stir. The Jabba the Hutt's Palace set from the Lego Star Wars line had a bit of controversy in the past because some folks out there felt like it bore a striking resemblance to real mosques in places like Istanbul and Lebanon. And a Turkish community in Austria was particularly vocal about the set, claiming that it was disrespectful and very offensive. And as word spread that the set might be discontinued due to the controversy, LEGO stepped in to clarify. They stated that the set was simply being retired after its two-year run, not because of any bias, but do you think that was a real reason? Or did it get banned because of all the controversy? But still sticking to Star Wars here because this is LEGO Clone Wars Twilight. Ah, the Star Wars universe, a place of epic battles, intergalactic politics, and let's face it, some polarizing eras as well. Well, the LEGO Clone Wars Twilight set takes us straight Right back to a time where debates raged on about the direction of the series. If you thought the current state of the Star Wars fandom was divided now, yeah, sorry Revenge of the Sith fans, well, this particular era might have just been equally tumultuous, if not more so. The Clone Wars Twilight set didn't escape the scrutiny at all. Hardcore fans weren't holding back on their opinions, but why? Well, for starters, the set was met with the complaints about its price tag, often deemed steep, especially for what it was offering. But it wasn't just about the cost, as fans felt that the set failed to capture the essence of the 
the beloved Star Wars saga, leaving many nostalgic souls disappointed. Reviews ended up pouring in, and they weren't exactly showering the set with glowing remarks. I mean, a lot of people didn't like it, and for that reason, it was almost taken off the shelves. But what about more Star Wars, like Lego Pod Racing? Ah, now we're moving on to Pod Racing, the heart-pounding, high-speed competition that divided Star Wars fans during the prequels. Amid the controversy surrounding, however, of episodes 1 to 3, there were a few things most could agree on. Darth Maul? Yeah, awesome. The memes? Oh, legendary. Pod racing? Undeniably cool. Until, well, LEGO decided to give it a spin. Enter LEGO's pod racing set. And well, things took a bit of a nosedive with this one. While pod racing had us on the edge of our seats in the movies, this LEGO incarnation didn't quite hit the same high notes. Imagine Anakin Skywalker's infamous line, I don't like sand, but directed at a poorly executed LEGO set instead. Next is LEGO's partnership with Shell. Remember those days when LEGO sets proudly featured the Shell logo, bringing a touch of the real world into our imaginative creations? Well, those days saw a twist when Environmental Crusaders Greenpeace stepped into the picture. They weren't exactly thrilled about LEGO cozying up to an oil giant. So basically, climate change. And in a bold move, Greenpeace produced a poignant video featuring LEGO minifigures drowning in a sea of black oil, making a statement against the partnership. Again, because of climate change. And the result? Well, LEGO and Shell's alliance was short-lived, coming to an abrupt halt in 2014. LEGO initially debated the matter with Greenpeace, arguing that the issue lay more with Shell than with them, but however, that didn't help though, because the collaboration ultimately ceased, showcasing the influence of real-world concerns on colorful plastic playsets. So, their contract was banned. LEGO Mr. Gold. Remember the thrill of finding one of those exclusive golden tickets in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Well, LEGO decided to harness that excitement with their own vision. They unleashed 5,000 Mr. Gold figures into the wild, hidden within random minifigure packs. And oh boy, did fans catch a fever. We got that! The LEGO community was whipped into a frenzy as they embarked on a treasure hunt for the epic proportions. Everybody wanted their hands on a Mr. Gold. Even I did, and I ordered a fake one when I was, when I was younger. Uh, I got scammed. But the journey to find Mr. Gold wasn't without its twists and turns. And when the dust settled and the lucky ones got their hands on the golden figure, there was a collective realization that the allure of gold couldn't entirely mask some quality issues. And let's just put it this way, not every Mr. Gold was really considered gold. I mean, look at some of these errors and uh, really popular amongst fans, but didn't quite go well because, well, we all wanted a Mr. Gold, and even the ones that got it, some of them weren't perfect. LEGO's Lando Carizian mishap. Long ago in the LEGO galaxy, the faces of all minifigures shared a universal color, a bright and sunny yellow. But why? Well, it allowed anyone playing with these figures to imagine characters from all walks of life. It was a creative blank canvas until a certain smooth-talking character entered the scene. Lando Calrissian, as charismatic as he is, unwittingly sparked a discussion. You see, when when LEGO embraced the Star Wars universe, a change was needed. Every character wearing that iconic yellow suddenly clashed with reality, and a reality that should include diverse skin tones. LEGO ended up stepping up, altering their approach to depict not only real races, but also a richer spectrum of human diversity in their sets. But initially when the set did come out for the first time, people were confused, and it did spark uh, quite the concern. LEGO Death Camp. In 1996, Polish artist Zbigniew Liberia had a bold idea that would spark a major debate debate involving LEGO. Libero reached out to the LEGO group for bricks without revealing his plans, and the company, unaware of his intentions, provided him with the bricks for his creation. However, when the world caught a glimpse of Libero's finished work, shockwaves rippled through. He had used LEGO bricks to construct a replica of the concentration camp reminiscent of Auschwitz. That's not funny at all. And if you don't know what that is, well, do a history lesson. What seemed like an attempt at dark humor was actually Libero's way of making a powerful artistic statement, aiming to invoke deep reflection rather than trivialize the Holocaust. And while LEGO initially wanted the artwork to remain unseen, but over time they let go of their objections, and despite the years of controversy and attempts at censorship, Libero's piece can now be found on display at the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, Poland. But don't think this is an official set or anything, and if it even was, it would probably be banned pretty quickly, because very, very, very controversial. LEGO Police Products In 2020, the tragic death of George Floyd ignited 
ignited nationwide protests against police brutality and racism. This movement rippled into unexpected corners, including the toy industry as well. And a prominent trade publication, The Toy Book, then unveiled an email from Rakuen Linkshare on behalf of LEGO that raised eyebrows. The email urged affiliate marketers to halt marketing efforts for specific LEGO products, notably those featuring police officers, firefighters, criminals, emergency vehicles, and related buildings. Sets such as the LEGO City Police Station, Fire Station, and even the White House Builder set were included in this list. The LEGO City Donut Shop opening set featuring a police officer and a crook figures was also flagged. I mean, they were just going after everything. But yeah, can you imagine that all these different LEGO products could have gotten banned over this? LEGO Technic V22 Osprey cancelled. On July 21st, 2020, LEGO made a surprising announcement. They were cancelling the release of the LEGO Technic V22 Osprey set, a real vehicle used by various military forces. But strangely enough, just 10 days before its scheduled to release on August 1st, LEGO pulled the plug on the Osprey and just didn't release it. They swiftly removed it from their website and informed retailers that the set wouldn't be hitting the shelves for some apparent reason. In their official statement, LEGO cited their long-standing policy against creating sets based on real military vehicles. So this set did get banned before it even got released. LEGO Ideas and the Legend of Zelda. If you've wandered into the realm of LEGO Ideas, you're likely familiar with the creative hub where fans can pitch their dream LEGO set ideas to all kinds of people. Now, if your dreams involve crafting a LEGO version of The Legend of Zelda, I've got some news for you. It's, uh, it's a no-go from here on out. Brick Fanatics has reported that the LEGO has slammed the door on Zelda-themed items. The culprit? It's the dreaded license conflict. When attempting to submit a concept tied to an existing IP like Zelda, the site sends up a red flag. Mario Bros, same deal. Pokemon, license clash again, thanks to Mega Constructs. And fans have previously taken a shot at Zelda-themed sets, even pushing some through the review stage, but all were eventually shut down. The only thing that has made a LEGO set for itself so far is Mario. The reasons might remain shrouded in mystery, but one thing's for sure, many wouldn't mind a LEGO Field Hyrule Castle in their collection, but good luck getting that because this thing was banned before it was even allowed to like make the review stage. LEGO's A to Z of Awesome LGBTQ campaign. Last year, the LEGO group embarked on a colorful journey with its A to Z of Awesome campaign. Last year, the LEGO group embarked on a colorful journey with its A to Z of Awesome campaign, dedicated to spotlighting the stories and identities of individuals in the LGBTQ community. And in a bid to spread awareness and inclusivity, the campaign featured videos showcasing LEGO building sets crafted by LGBTQ adult fans of the iconic brand. These sets weren't just about bricks though, because they were also about reflections of personal journeys. Among them were heartwarming scenes of same-sex families bringing an added layer of representation into the brick world. However, as often happens with initiatives pushing for inclusivity, pushback did emerge from this set. The LEGO group faced conservative boycott calls fueled by false claims that the campaign was targeted at children. Unfortunately, this led to a bit of a downturn for the company, so uh, so yeah. Still out there, but didn't do the best. LEGO 75309 Republic Gunship Designer Video Controversy In 2021, the LEGO group once again found itself in a pickle as it removed the designer video for the 75309 Republic Gunship from its YouTube channel. This move came in response to an outpouring of discontent from Star Wars fans. And since its unveiling, the Ultimate Collector Series, or UCS, set has been wrapped in controversy. Most of the fuss revolved around quotes from the design team and decisions by LEGO's marketing department. The designer video, starring LEGO designer Hans Burkhard Schlammer, should have been an opportunity to shine light on the design process behind this colossal prequel trilogy ship. However, it instead added fuel to the already roaring fire leading to its removal. Uploaded a full month after the 3,292-piece set's release, the video featured insights from Hans, but it was two specific quotes that ignited the turmoil. First, Hans referred to the Republic gunship as an original trilogy vehicle, despite its appearance in Star Wars Attack of the Clones, a clear part of the prequel trilogy. And the second was Hans doubling down on earlier comments where he called the included clone commander minifigure a makeshift pilot. The aftermath, a deluge of dislikes and a wave of negative comments on the video promoted by the LEGO group to yank it from their YouTube channel entirely. So yeah, this set did get a lot of hate after and maybe even almost taken down, but it's all because of the really big LEGO Star Wars fans. LEGO Woman of NASA In 2017, LEGO pulled back the curtain on their inspiring Women of NASA collection. This captivating lineup was born from the creativity of a winner in the second 2016 LEGO Ideas review. Sharing the exciting news was the company's marketing manager, Lee Stidensberg, who enthusiastically delivered the announcement via a video shared across their blog and social media channels. The collection was all set to feature remarkable figures like NASA researcher Catherine Johnson, a real-life 
inspiration behind the character in an Oscar-nominated film, Hidden Figures. The anticipation was high, and the fans were ready to dive into the space theme wonders. However, as often the case, trolls emerged from the depths to rain on the parade. Amidst the buzz, some voices criticized the collection. One naysayer opined that the set's minifigures and micro-builds weren't worth the investment, claiming the value just wasn't there. Then there were some more people who decided to sprinkle some controversy, citing LEGO's prohibition on projects involving politics and political symbols. This individual called the feminist LEGO set hypocritical. The comments managed to cover quite a range, dismissing the movement, labeling women as oppressors, and even denying the existence of white privilege. So yeah, this, this led to some pretty crazy turn of events. Uh, it's just a LEGO set about women astronauts. Who cares, right? Set 6951 Robot Command Center. Let's rewind to the vibrant mid-1980s when LEGO was deep into its captivating astronaut theme. Among the gems of that era was Set 6951 Robot Command Center. Sporting those iconic astronaut minifigures and a rather peculiar space structure, this set won the hearts of many young builders out there, and that's what truly matters, doesn't it? Now, this set is no dud, but the whole concept of a command center takes a dive into the realm of strange. Imagine a structure with legs, and not just any legs, but arms too? Instead of regular eyes, it boasts windows, but the cherry on top of this odyssey? Those tiny feet that somehow keep the whole thing upright. Yeah. How on earth does this robot-ish entity maintain its balance even? The creators seem to have ventured into uncharted imaginative territory. Of course, we get it though because it's a robot command center, and the center itself embodies a robot-esque design. So, logically, the building is the robot taking orders, or something along those lines. Yet, no matter how you slice it, the result is a delightful blend of cute, confusing, and unquestionably weird. So, this one didn't get banned or anything, but it definitely drew some eyeballs. Now, set 1853 Hypno Cruiser. It's time to enter the realm of set 1853 Hypno Cruiser, a piece of a much debated Time Cruiser's theme, which, let's face it, wasn't exactly LEGO's crown jewel. It's almost as if the creators rifled through the parts bin of overproduced pieces from yesteryears. And the result, a touch of gimmicky charm. Sometimes words fall short and a picture takes the stage. However, even the visuals might struggle to capture the eccentric essence of this set. Prepare for a delightful oddity in every nook and cranny, because the Hypno Cruiser, for starters, is a melange of bricks harvested from diverse themes, creating a tapestry of design influences. Accessories, seemingly curated to embody various eras the vehicle can venture to, come across as arbitrary and oddly placed. And then, the plot twist. The monkey. Yes, the, the monkey. Yes, you read that right. A monkey that makes an appearance. The mystery of why a monkey found its way to this quirky mix remains unsolved too. So, definitely a weird set, and it didn't get banned or anything, but again, a lot of controversy. Set 6496 Whirling Time Warper. Continuing our stroll through the eccentric world of the Time Cruiser scene, we land on the set 6496 Whirling Time Warper. Well, brace yourselves, because in this corner of LEGO history, overproduced and discontinued parts come together to craft a tapestry of design that's uniquely chaotic. Now, let's be clear, choosing only one Time Cruiser set to spotlight was a challenge, but we simply couldn't resist the Whirling Time Warper. It might just outweird the Hypno Cruiser, and that's saying something. This set is essentially a psychedelic trip encapsulated in bricks. It's a melting pot of oddity that's likely to leave your head spinning for a pretty long time. So why you ask? The answer lies in the mind-boggling array of movable items that populate this set, complete with the unexpected addition of a ghost. It's as if the creators tossed every curious element they could think of, resulting in a masterpiece of perplexity. What do these moving parts and spectral figures signify? Your guess is as good as mine, and I'm willing to bet even the LEGO designers might have been caught off guard by the peculiar puzzle they conjured. Conjured. Wow, I can't speak right now. Set 2539 Frights Knight's Batwing Flyer. Within the Fright Knight sub-theme lies this gem, the Batwing Flyer, a modest introductory set packing a punch with its Batlord minifigure, radiating a super cool aura. Notably though, LEGO also rolled out a similar set featuring the Batlord along with a crystal ball. But what truly sets this sub-theme apart is its pioneering introduction of the Bat figure and the crystal ball accessory making waves in the LEGO universe. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on this masterpiece because take a moment to absorb its essence because yes, it's exactly what you're thinking. You're looking at a scene that encapsulates a medieval warrior astride a medieval flying contraption. It's a scenario that could only happen in the world of LEGO where imagination knows no bounds. So go ahead and consider this case officially closed because LEGO did that, um, somehow. Four Animal Friends. Traveling back to 1979 when Scala made its debut, take a brief hiatus in 1980 before resurfacing in 1997. This theme was crafted with young girls in mind, offering a range of minifigures and accessories that differed from the norm, with an exclusive focus on cuteness, jewelry, accessories, and furniture 
furniture, Scala captured hearts with its doll-like minifigures. But hold on to your bricks because if you thought the Friends theme raised an eyebrow, Scala might just boggle your imagination, well, even more. It's an aesthetic departure from the typical Lego look, for sure, but a choice that seems to define the theme. Because picture this, a peculiar picnic scenario featuring a Dalmatian, a cat, a litter of kittens, the animals themselves comes in sizes that might leave you questioning their scale, and then there are the accessories, picnic blanket, jars, plates, and various bits of food that could potentially baffle animal dietary habits. But here's what gets even more curious. While Scala probably intended these pieces to interact with human Scala dolls, the scene Sans dolls translates into a rather odd spectacle. It's akin to a dog, a cat, and their kittens stepping out for an unconventional date. A visual that, while intriguing, might not exactly conjure the coziest mental image. So I think this set did pretty bad. Now let's talk about an epic set, Dino Jet. Now venture back to 1998 once again, a time when the Snap theme took its bow onto the Lego stage. But there's a catch. This scene bore a striking resemblance to Kinect's building sets, igniting a spark of controversy. Despite the critique, Snap introduced a collection of intriguing pieces ideal for crafting an array of vehicles, buildings, and bridges as well. Snap, as a theme, had an inherent quirkiness, but among its peculiar offerings, set 3551 Dinojet takes the cake for bewilderment. At its core, this creation is meant to be a vehicle, quite possibly a jet as well. At least that's what the creators want us to believe. Uh, yeah. Yet here's the scoop. It's a jet that doesn't look like a jet. Scratch that. It doesn't even resemble anything recognizable, period. A dash of trust in the creative process seems necessary. As for the box's design concepts too, well, well, brace yourself for the ensemble of visuals that mirror the perplexity of the dino jet itself. Snap, as a theme, embraced its oddball nature with open arms, making a mark on Lego history with its distinct peculiarity and, well, it didn't last long on shelves. Let's just put it that way. Set 4095-1, record and play. While the creator themes often dance on the edge of imaginative design, this set's appearance raises eyebrows, no doubt. Gazing upon it, one might see a robotic insect, a peculiar choice to say the least. Yes, the box showcases other possibilities, yet the initial impression still leans towards the odd. Record and play? But, but what exactly? This is an audio recorder with a twist? Why does it sport an insect-like physique? The pieces don't even align. Even after reading the instructions, the bewilderment lingers. Amidst the maraud robot shapes that could have been conjured, they settled on a colossal insect. The query remains Lego. What was the thought process here? As I embrace the intricity of the record and play set, I can't help but raise an amused eyebrow as to what was the creative leap here, and well, that does explain why I didn't do that well. Next up, Manta Warrior. Puzzling, isn't it? A set so minuscule that you can't help but ponder its purpose. Why? You might even ask, does a set of such petite stature exist in the first place? Well, beyond the perplexity, there's a charismatic minifigure, the Manta Warrior, who undoubtedly excludes coolness. However, the set's components tell a rather modest story. 13 brick pieces comprise its entirety. Y yes, you heard that right. 13 pieces to conjure a world. 13 pieces in a Lego set. Yet within these confines, you can craft a humble rock, the sole creation accompanying this valiant warrior. And that's also why this humble rock didn't quite do well in terms of sales with Lego. Now, feast your eyes on giant spider. Are spiders the stuff of shivers? For many, the answer is a resounding yes. Yet the narrative surrounding these creatures often sways between reality and pop culture portrayal. Much like sharks, spiders have been cast as villainous figures, invoking terror in the hearts of many. However, diving into the animal kingdom's realm of aggression, spiders hardly secure a top spot. I have so many questions, and I think that's why not many people bought it, unless they like spiders. Belleville Rosita's Wonderful Stable 5833. In the year 2001, the fairy tale series welcomed the Belleville set 5833 Rosita's Wonderful Stable. A seemingly modern addition to the collection, it proves to be a peculiar entry to the eyes of many. While anticipation looms large, this set's portrayal of a wonderful and stable leaves much to be desired. As the package is unveiled, the aspired wonderful remains elusive. The set comprises as an assemble, a delicate doll graced with an umbrella, a horse, a castle-style wall, only two bricks crowned by a church. The puzzle emerges, and how can a single castle-style wall claim that mantle of a stable? A question that bewilders many. But we're not done there because this is Belleville Garden Fun. So imagine this. There's a girl in a swing enjoying her time in the garden. Now, Belleville sets are kind of known for being all about that pink life. It's like they ask, how much pink can we cram in here? Instead of asking, is this a set even cool at all? But here's the thing. Even though the swings are usually loads of fun, this set doesn't really scream excitement. If you check out the picture, the girl seems kind of bored. And even that blob-like thing that's supposed to be a cat doesn't seem impressed either. Plus, let's be real here. She's not exactly following the how to swing safely rule book either. My mom would have had a field day if I tried that. Hulk Helicopter Rescue 76144. Now let's talk about the Hulk Helicopter Rescue set. Buckle up because we've got some highs and lows here. Get it? Because uh, it's a helicopter. 
helicopter. First off, there are some seriously awesome parts to this set. We're talking about the rescue figure. It's top notch. And don't even get me started on the Iron Man nano gauntlet. I mean, that thing's just awesome too. Oh, and the Hulk big figure? Yeah, pretty great that they thought there was room for improvement there. Yeah, pretty great nonetheless, but though there was some room for improvement. They went with the Quantum Realm look for Hulk, which is a good call because the Avengers compound version would have kind of been meh. But you know what would have been even better? If they went the extra mile and gave Hulk some snazzy arm and leg designs. Like seriously, that wouldn't have taken things to a whole new level. So yeah, these are some real gems of the set. All right, now comes the moment of truth where we will talk about the not so great stuff. Black Widow, what are you doing here? This set came out a bit after Endgame and it wasn't hitting the shelves until way later in the year. So you'd think that they'd be all up to date, right? Well, nope. They just threw in Black Widow. Like who? Let's be honest. It didn't quite make through to the movie. It's like they didn't get the memo. They could have given us an exclusive Ronin Hawkeye figure, which was a big deal early on in the movie hype. But no, they just stuck with Black Widow. And you know what's even weirder? Back in 2017, Lego swapped out a figure in a Star Wars set. So they totally could have done it here. So they just took the lazy route and that showed. And last but not least too, well, those Chitauri figures, they were way cooler back in 2012. No doubt about it. Sure, they gave them a better face print this time around, but seriously, Lego, no leg printing? After eight years, they downgraded from having leg prints to just not having them at all? Yeah, it's a bummer and folks were rightfully disappointed with this set, which I don't think it did that well for that reason. Oh, we're about to end it off real good. Spider-Man vs. Doc Ock. So first things first, the minifigures weren't all that bad with this one. Spider-Man, for one, was actually a pretty decent one. They hooked him with a dual molded legs, which was a nice touch. Now, Spider-Girl, she's a newer character, so I was stoked they included her in the mix. She's got this simple vibe going on with her minifigure, but here's the kicker. Where's the leg printing, right? And then there's Doc Ock, who's undeniably cool, but then again, the same question. Where's the leg printing, Lego? It's like a broken record by now. They just gotta up their leg printing game. Now, brace yourself, because the build is where things go a bit off the rails. Can you believe they gave Spider-Man a bike? I mean, seriously, this is Spider-Man we're talking about. The dude who swings through the city on webs like it's his morning jog. So the idea of him needing a bike is a bit, well, weird. You'd think Peter Parker might need it, but not Spider-Man. Let's not forget, this bike is anything but sleek. It's got legs sticking out all over the place like it's trying to do splits midair. Yeah, call it nitpicking, but come on, that bike's design is just not cutting it out. Let's be real. But wait, there's more. It doesn't end there, because you won't believe this. That atrocious bike that can actually transform into a mini spider walker and an unfinished looking bike. I mean, why in the world does Spider-Girl need a slow walker to fight? It's a head scratcher, no doubt, and I don't understand why they did it. Like, who's in the Lego boardroom making these calls? It's like they took the whole thinking outside the box thing just a bit too far. And honestly, that's not enough ranting about this set. It's got its quirks for sure. But let's just say it's not winning any awards for best Lego Marvel creation anytime soon. Anyways, you made it to the end of the video, so which Lego item were you surprised to hear the most that maybe you haven't ever heard of or got banned? Let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe!